first episode mood and anxiety program. This program seeks to help older teens and young adults with emotional concerns by providing a safe and confidential place for them to get help at an early stage. Mental health is a serious problem and is becoming more and more critical during this pandemic. Many people may face challenges to endure the loneliness caused by social distancing and quarantine policies. Therefore, we are planning and preparing the online concert to gather attention to youth who suffer from negative emotions. If you would like to further support the program FEMAP, please click the link above and it will direct you to the proper donation page. At this festive time of year, we welcome everyone to join us for a lovely night tonight and anticipate the amazing concert ahead. We're grateful to have the honor to host the fundraising concert to generate awareness for the mental health problems that FEMAP accommodates and encourage the active prevention measures of COVID-19. A kind reminder for everyone to actively social distance, wash your hands frequently, stay at home, and restrain from participating in gatherings and parties. Before the concert officially starts, I would like to greet everyone by saying a happy Lunar New Year and happy Valentine's. Following our introductions, we have some amazing culture performances from the Toronto Chinese Orchestra, CIVO, the Western Piano Society, the London Chinese Student Choir, One Dance CTT, um, London Chinese Association, and the London Health Science Foundation. First up, we have an introduction video by the London Health Science Foundation to show us the excellent work that they do. Following that, we have two great performance um, by the members of the Western Piano Society to start off the concert. We have Merry Go Round of Life by Jonathan Lee and Moon in One's Cup by Sabrina Chen. Enjoy. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Osuch. I'm the founder and physician lead of the first episode Mood and Anxiety program. So when a young person contacts us, generally they've been suffering in silence for months to years. And so for us to tell them after they've mustered up the courage to contact us that you're going to have to wait for six to nine months for treatment is a tragedy. It's not how the system should work. It's not how we want it to work. So we plan to double our capacity. So we plan to double the number of psychiatrists that we have on staff, double the number of social workers, double the amount of family therapy time, double the amount of substance abuse treatment, and um, provide additional groups as well as individual care for our patients. FEMAP has stayed alive since 2006 and grown to the size that it is through donations primarily. And we're at the point where the community around us has obviously told us, we want you to keep doing the fine work that you're doing. We want you to increase the capacity of FEMAP so that you can grow and meet the needs of our young people even more. So we are happy to be able to do that. And I look forward to a time when a young person can contact us and within weeks be guaranteed that they'll get the treatment that they need. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Let us give a virtual round of applause to our lovely performers and a big thank you to the Western Piano Society for providing us with the great performance videos. Since it was the Lunar New Year two days ago, next up we have prepared two cultural instrument performances by the Toronto Chinese Orchestra to commemorate our unique cultural heritage. It will feature some novel Chinese classical instruments. For the household rhythms, we can see a new initiative taken by the performers to creatively stay positive. They have incorporated musical elements from their routine to create this special performance. And a big shout out to their efforts and creativity for maintaining a positive lifestyle during COVID. Following that, we have another beautiful instrumental performance by TCO called Beautiful Flowers Under Full Moon. It conveys the great message of reuniting with family and friends. As well, we have a virtual multicultural collaboration from Angela and Joe. It is an instrumental performance with two traditional Chinese instruments, and the name of the piece is an OST to the show called Rui's Royal Love in the Palace. Lastly, before our first live interview, we have Wilson Wayne's calligraphy show. We truly appreciate the efforts that Wilson take to continuously practice Chinese calligraphy, and it is an amazing way to keep calm and concentrate during quarantine. Remember that you can click the link above to make donations to support the FEMAP program anytime during the concert. Please enjoy.
All right. Thanks for the beautiful performance brought by the Toronto Chinese Orchestra and members of Chinese International Volunteer Organization. Now we have a special guest with us. We invited the calligraphy performer Wilson Wan to share some facts with us about his life during this very challenging time. So hi, Wilson. Hi. So here are some questions for you. Um, first of all, how do you adjust to life under the current distancing socializing situation, and how do you keep a positive mindset and a healthy lifestyle? Well, thinking about the positive effects of living in lockdown helps me keep back to my side. I realize that lockdown life means more opportunities to be alone and focused. Uh, it can take advantage of them and do things I've never done before, and it makes me look forward to a better tomorrow. At the same time, try to give yourself some material comforts in life, which will help to maintain a positive attitude. Having a positive mindset and a positive attitude is definitely something great to do right now. And um, also, maybe it is pretty difficult for us to meet with our friends, families, and other important ones. So, what do you usually do when you miss them during this pandemic? Yeah, since there is no way to hold offline gatherings this year. I often participate in online activities with my friends in Seoul. Sometimes we chat and play games to relax, and we also design and organize some activities together. This is a sense of honor to achieve common goals through cooperation. Collective cohesion never makes me feel alone. Totally, there's a lot of online activities going on as well, and um, I think. This is definitely a hard time for all of us, but some people have said that they have spent more time thinking about and figuring out things. So, have you learned anything new from this pandemic? Yeah, the pandemic made me think what's the most important thing in my life. In the future, I believe I will cherish my family and friends more, help others as much as possible, exercise more, and try to learn a wider range of knowledge. Treat each of my day from now on as if it were my last. Definitely, I agree with you too. There's still a lot of new things we can do during this hard time. And um, do you have anything you wanted to say to our viewers, to those students who are currently dealing with anxiety or mental health issues? Well, first of all, I hope you don't suppress yourself too much. You can do more to police yourself and prevent yourself from getting trapped in negative emotions. Secondly, we can seek more help from family and friends. Talking to each other and understanding each other is conducive to ease the impact of negative emotions. Finally, you must believe that you are strong enough to give yourself positive mental hints. Definitely, and we hope everyone is will be strong enough. During this difficult time, and then the last question will be that: Have you encountered situations where you experience mental health issues or anxiety? How did you feel, and what approach do you take to address these problems? How do you overcome them? Any efficient ways or suggestions you would like to offer? Yeah, there are times when reading negative news about pandemic can really make me feel upset and anxious. I often find an emotional outlet for myself. It can be complete something that makes me concentrate, such as sports, calligraphy, or chess. In addition, we need to avoid the information cocoon on the internet and try to focus on something positive. That's definitely some great advice. So thank you so much for your time being with us today, and I would like to pass on to Cecilia. Thank you, Catherine and Wilson. And now we have another special guest to share her unique experience with FEMAP. Let us welcome Sid Robertson. Good evening, Sid. We're glad to have you here with us tonight. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And thank you for inviting me to be here tonight. That's great. So let's start off with our first question. Do you mind sharing your story about mental health with us? Yes, of course. So my journey with mental health actually started when I was in high school. Um, my mother was a victim of domestic violence, and when I experienced this with my family when I was in grade 11, it was something that I kind of just dealt with very quickly and just kind of moved on from the whole situation and carried on as if life was normal. 
And when I entered into my first year of university, it was really when it started to surface for me because I didn't really have any distractions at university like I did when I was in high school. I was involved with volunteerism and in my community, academics and sports in high school. Whereas I went to university and I was in a completely new environment where I didn't know anyone. And so a lot of um, symptoms came out in me during this time. Okay, um, I'm sorry for what you have experienced and I'm glad that you have realized your symptoms. And so when did you first realize that you needed to seek support? It was probably in my second year of university when I realized that enough was enough. I was just really sick of not feeling like myself, not knowing why I was saying or doing the things that I was doing. I just felt extremely out of character. I felt that I was participating in a lot of things that were not true to myself um, and experiencing a lot of mental health symptoms really had me in a place that I didn't want to be anymore. And so it was in my second year university where I guess you could say I had kind of, um, you know, a rock bottom moment, I guess, or reached my breaking point when I really was ready to start seeking support to get better. Okay, um, that is good to hear. Uh, we were really glad that you um, found support after all. And so how has FEMAP specifically helped in the support you received throughout your whole journey? Yeah, FEMAP has been honestly a lifesaver um, for me. When I was, you know, finally ready to reach out for support and look for help, um, because I was new to London, as I'm sure a lot of us can relate to being new to the city, um, I didn't know where to access resources. And I actually came across FEMAP through someone else sharing their story at a fashion show that I was at. So a very similar fundraising event to what you are all putting on tonight. Um, there was a past patient who shared her story. And I really resonated with all of the things that she was sharing and the experiences that she had been through. And so that was really what connected me to the resource. I had never heard of FEMAP before. And that initial, um, you know, engagement or, you know, realization of what FEMAP was, was what encouraged me to reach out. And I think that it's been a really, you know, pivotal part of my journey because I was able to access barrier-free services. So I think that if I was, you know, in the position that I was and I would have had to pay the amount that, you know, is typically charged for things like therapy, things like FEMAP offers, I likely wouldn't have, you know, had the transformation that I did have because at that time as a student, I likely wouldn't have been able to afford it. That is really awesome to hear. Um, and so, how do you cope with your symptoms with FEMAP and then with, under their help? Like, do you have any hobbies that you picked up or any coping mechanisms? Um, do you mind explaining to us a bit about how? Yeah, definitely. So through my time at FEMAP, both in a one-on-one -on -one program and in a group program, I learned lots of tools and resources to keep in my back pocket for when I'm not feeling the greatest. And the great thing about accessing the services at FEMAP is that they really want you to be self-sufficient. They want you to be able to, you know, move on when you are phased out of the program um, to be able to take care of yourself. And so I've learned many, many different things, but some of the things that I still do practice on a daily basis to have myself feeling my best um, are things like meditation and breath work, um, exercise, daily movement, you know, getting outside, getting fresh air, doing a workout, um, things like nourishing my body, being really mindful about the foods that I'm consuming, um, and, you know, really limiting things that maybe don't make me feel my best, uh, making sure that I'm connecting with friends and family. I keep a daily gratitude practice and I really do, um, you know, really like personal development. So conferences, um, podcasts, self-help books, all of that sort of thing has really helped me to shift into a more positive mindset. Yeah, thank you so much for your tips. It's great hearing about them and I'm sure that it will help so many people struggling and battling the same problems. And so um, in your opinion, why is FEMAP so important for the youth combating mental health? I know you've touched upon how they provide really um, specific programs and specific uh, courses or any help for youth, but why specifically do you think FEMAP is beneficial for youth? 
Well, I actually had experience with a few different um, therapists in the past prior to going to FEMAP. And the experience was totally different at FEMAP in the sense that it was very welcoming, very supportive. Um, there wasn't a cost attached to my appointments and I also didn't need a doctor's referral. So, you know, it was the type of thing that I could refer myself by just phoning or emailing and going through the intake process. And I think for a lot of youth, you know, when you do require a doctor's note, for example, they get, that can carry a lot of shame or embarrassment around having to go to your doctor and explain what you're experiencing. And then, you know, oftentimes your parents may find out and that may be embarrassing or hold a lot of shame. And for me, that really was a big part of it was that not many of my family knew, not many of my close friends knew that I was accessing this service at FEMAP. And so it really is just such a great space. They welcome you as you are. There's no judgment, no shame, um, nothing to be embarrassed about because they really want to support you on your journey. Um, and they really do want to help you get better. For sure. And we really appreciate how you're coming on to share with us, you know, your journey and tell us about FEMAP. We're really grateful for that. And so um, do you have a message that you'd like to share with those combating with mental illnesses or mental health issues? Yeah, I think the main thing that I would say is that even though a lot of times you may feel like you're alone in your struggles or how you're feeling, you're definitely not alone and how important it is to reach out for help. I think for me at the time when I was struggling the most, I didn't know where to go for help. I think it became incredibly obvious that I did need support, but I had no one helping me access support. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to talk to. And so it took a lot for me to do it on my own. So I guess I would say if you as an individual or a friend has shared with you that they need support or that they're looking for help, actually try and actively connect them to resources because, you know, the unfortunate thing is, is that we're not professionals and it's really important to talk to your family and to your close friends about things that you're struggling with, but your friend, family and friends are not professionals. And so I would just say, you know, if you are someone who's struggling with symptoms of, you know, mental health to, you know, get connected, whether that's having someone help you get connected or getting connected yourself, because the longer you wait to get help, the worse you're going to feel. And, you know, the lot, it's going to take a lot longer for you to actually get better. That is really great to know. I'm sure a lot of our audiences right now have a rough idea or have a clear idea about how to help their friends, their families um, who are struggling. So um, our last question, actually, um, it's been a really nice interview or it's a really nice conversation with you. So um, we reach our last question, which is, is there anything you'd like to say to those watching, to anybody in the audience? Yeah. Um, I think to kind of conclude the interview to anyone who's tuning in and watching this tonight, I would really encourage you to give a donation if you are able to. Um, I know obviously everyone is in a different situation because of the pandemic, but um, you know, instead of maybe grabbing lunch this week or you know, grabbing a coffee every day this week, if you could redirect that money to a donation for tonight, um, FEMAP would be so grateful for that support because unfortunately um, awareness doesn't always provide services. We need money to provide the services because there's a lot of costs that come with providing a free service service like FEMAP um, and making sure that there are, you know, professional trained um, professionals that are delivering these services. So I highly encourage if you are in here tonight, if you are tuning into this event to please give a donation, um, no matter how big or how small, it will make a really big impact on FEMAP. Thank you so much, Sit, for your tips and your information. Um, we hope that you have a, a great um, rest of the evening and have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you. Thank you again. All right, so this will conclude our interview for this uh, session right now. And once again, I would like to thank Wilson from Chinese International Volunteer Organization and Sid from London Health Science Foundation for taking their time to meet with us, to share their stories, and make the interview so pleasant today. Now we would like to reinforce the theme of today's concert, which is to fundraise for the program FEMAP to help and support older teens and young adults building, uh, battling mental health problems. If you would like to support the program, feel free to click the donation button. It will direct you to the proper donation page. Now, let's welcome the following groups of performers. They are members of Linden Chinese Student Choir, Bring Us the Sun, Someone You Loved, 
and a short interview with their choir director Jennifer Wong. We also have one direction, uh, one dance with us today. Bring us dance performances, intention, and what you need. In addition, we have Toronto Chinese Orchestra back with us again. Bring instrumental performances, medley of Hakka folk songs, and spirit breeze. Followed by interview with the music director Patty Chen. Lastly, we have members from Chinese International Volunteer Organization, Wendy performing Tai Chi Kung Fu, and Linden Chinese Association bring their unique Chinese handful clothing shell. Through these performances, we would like to encourage everyone to stay healthy and stay active at the both at the same time, and also stay strong and stay connected. Thank you. here to you know welcome you to join us at any time if you're feeling stressed um, so this is a really good platform and you know we're a group of positive people sharing positive vibes um, you know we sing together we practice and we feel so much better after you know the time we spent together 
Um, so feel free to join us and this is our Instagram. Feel free to follow us too. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Patty Chen, and I'm the music director for the Toronto Chinese Orchestra. Um, as a musician, it's been uh, quite a challenging year, and uh, I think our greatest challenge is not being able to meet together and to play music together. And so uh, we've learned to adjust and uh, stay active virtually. So we've managed to uh, meet each other online every week and uh, just have little projects, video projects, which uh, we do have one coming up uh, that will be released on February 11th. If you'd like to take a look at it, it's going to be uh, released February 11th at 8 o'clock. And you can find more information about it on our website, torontochineseorchestra.com. Um, it's it's been a challenge. I think like to even organize a rehearsal online has been a challenge um, because we can't all play together at once and so we've had to, uh, to break out into different sections and uh, do a lot of individual playing. Um, but with the video projects we're able to at least gather together regularly and uh, have something to focus on and to have a goal. Um, so that I think has been very helpful. My biggest uh, advice actually to continue, because we're going to be in lockdown for a while longer, um, my biggest advice actually is to reach out to um, our friends and family. Um, even, you know, just meeting virtually is, uh, is good, you're able to stay connected that way. Um, but uh, otherwise, I think, you know, trying to stay active, uh, go out for walks and uh, exercise, try to sleep well, these are all great advice for us to try to follow. Um, I think the benefit or the one bright point in our uh, experience with the pandemic is that it's gotten us to try to be more <clears throat> creative and uh, coming up with ideas to, uh, I guess, continue onwards. Um, so through the pandemic, I w we're able to reach out to different orchestras across Canada. And I think um, by working on a, a video project and linking us together, I think without, the, without being un in lockdown and everything, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have thought to do something like this. And so I think that's one positive. I'm hoping that we'll be able to collaborate and continue to work together also in the future. Um, but otherwise, I think we just have to do our best and try to stay safe and healthy and uh, try to be kind to each other and uh, focus on the positive.
Thank you for the amazing performances. Next up, we have invited the beautiful performer for the Hanfu Show here with us tonight to talk about her experience coping with COVID. Welcome, Vanessa. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm good. How do you adjust to life under the current distance social thing, uh, the social distancing situation, and how do you keep a positive mindset and a healthy lifestyle? Uh, I really like the Hanfu. So I have when I have the negative emotions, I will dress up my Hanfu and taking photos. Then I will show this photo to my social media, such as the Instagrams. And when um, when I see those photos and the other friends like my photos, I will feel happy and overcome my negative uh, emotions. Because and this is because Hanfu is represent the traditional Chinese cultures. And when I saw them, I will uh, recall my happy memories about my hometown and forgot the troubles. It's really nice that、um, to see you have this coping mechanism and a way to combat the negativity that COVID brings you. And so maybe it is really difficult for us to meet with our friends, families, and other important ones. What do you usually do to、um, when you miss them during the pandemic?、Um, when I miss my family and friends, I usually make a phone call or the video call with them. And during the、um, video call, I can show my new hand for them and talk. Talk with them about the handful.、Um, although we can't、uh, meet meet each other each each other in person,、um, the phone connect us together, and we still keep in、um, touch、um, in phones, and、um, that make me not feel lonely anymore. For sure, and I definitely agree that this is a hard time for all of us. For some people, have said that they have spent more time reflecting their lifestyles and their choices.、Um, so, I guess our question for you then is: Have you learned anything from this pandemic?、Uh, yeah, from this pandemic,、uh, I learned and gained many new friends, especially those in the civil and CC.、Uh, although we can't meet each other、uh, in person,、uh, we can、uh, keep in touch online. And we can do some activity and game together. And because of them,、uh, I know、uh, I I learn how to、um, keep positively. And、um, because of them,、um, it they help me a lot. Great. And so, connecting back to today's、uh, concert and to the theme of today's concert, have you encountered situations where you experienced mental health issues or anxiety? If you did, how did you feel, and why?、Uh, what kind of approaches did you take to address them、um, positively? Okay,、uh, for me, I didn't exper-、uh, experience any、uh, mental health issues because I think I'm a positive t-、um, person, and when I have the、um, bad emotions,、uh, I can release them by myself.、Uh, I usually listen to、uh, the music or dress up some handful、um, to.、Um, Dress about this、um, bad emotions. Moreover, I also have many friends, and、uh, um, when I have the、um, bad emotions, they will talk with me, and they su- they support me a lot. Yeah, it's really nice to hear that you have、um, the support system with friends and families to get you through、um, the down times. And so, lastly, do you have anything you want to say to our viewers, to our audiences, and to those students who are currently combating with anxiety issues? Um, um, to students who dealing with the、uh, mental health issue, I want to say、um, they need to、um, talk with each others or just、uh, cry by themselves to release that bad emotions.、Um, and、uh, when they find they can't.、Um, Overcome those bad emotion by themselves. They can just uh, uh, ask for the、uh, medicine、uh, help or just to see the doctors. And finally,、um, try to trust themselves, and they can、uh, overcome that. Great! Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And now I'll pass、um, the mic, I guess, to Catherine. Okay. All right. So thanks, Cecilia, and、um, hi, Tanja. Thanks for being with us today. And、um, yeah. So would you like? Do you mind to share? Start by sharing your story about mental health with us. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So my journey with mental health started at a very young age, but it did not become apparent to me until I was in high school. 
And in high school, I was formally diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, thank you for sharing the story. And um, do you, like when do you first realize you need to seek support? There's been man, many periods of my life where I've noticed that I need extra help and I need support, but it's nothing that I took seriously until I moved to London about six years ago. And my anxiety specifically was highly impacting my job. And that was about three years ago when I started seeking help, like very seriously. We feel bad for all the difficulties you once faced and definitely it will be like a difficult time. And for you, but we're so happy that you choose to seek support. And that's a definitely important thing to do. And um, it's really inspiring us. And I think it will be like inspiring many others who are watching right now. And uh, how has the support you received throughout your mental health journey has been? And how is it different from FEMAP? That's a really good question. Um, so I'm originally from Manitoba, and the support that I've received out there is significantly different than any help that I've gotten out here. I've been to different counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists. I've stayed in a safe house uh, or a crisis house, as it's also known. And any of the programs that I've used prior to FEMAP have not been as hands-on the support that I receive at FEMAP is vastly different than anywhere I've ever been. You feel very welcome and comfortable there. And it's it's a more inviting environment than anywhere else I've been. It's definitely a tough journey and we're so happy for you that you find FEMAP and then a right and supportive place to go. And thanks for the sharing. And so in addition, um, how do you cope with what you are going through and what are some hobbies you take up during this journey? So, uh, different ways I cope kind of depends on, uh, different things that I'm going through. So if you're going through a depressive episode, there's a lot of time spent in bed. And one thing that I found really helps me is setting a, a timer for 15 minutes where I do anything at all during that 15 minutes, as long as I get out of bed. So I could be just spending time with my cat, just go stand outside, go do dishes. As long as I'm doing something for 15 minutes, that, that can help bring you out of like a depressive episode or just make your day a little bit better. Whereas when I'm feeling overly anxious, I practice a lot of grounding exercises. I actually have a grounding kit that I filled with personalized items that focus on all five senses that you can carry with you and I use quite, quite often. So it brings you back into the moment and makes you focus on positive things instead of letting anxiety take over and yeah. That's definitely cool methods. And um, yeah, I think exercise and hobbies and like all those different methods help us to feel relaxed and then to take a step like away from like the busy life and then to actually to enjoy like the slow way of like lifestyle. And mm -hmm. um, I think those are really good devices for like maybe not um, when we face like only mental health problems, but also like when there's a lot of pressures going on or like anxiety going on and things definitely cool methods like to feel relaxed. So thank you so much for sharing. And um, can you further explain what FEMAP is and how did you get involved with FEMAP? The best way I could describe FEMAP is I would say it's a mental health hub. So. It is research based, which means when you first enter FEMAP, when you're accepted in the program, you do have to do some questionnaires, but they're very quick, they're very easy, and they're just there to gauge how effective the help that you receive at FEMAP is, and it helps them learn how to improve. So at FEMAP, you can meet with uh, different counselors like social workers, trauma counselors, there's psychiatrists, and the psychiatrist can get you on medication if that's a route that you're interested in taking. And there's also different um, anxiety and trauma groups. And I know that they're looking to expand. So yeah, FEMAP just has a lot of, a lot of uh, different options and they're all there. It's great. It's a huge, huge range of different services that they offer. That's really 
nice to hear about and then like a good detailed information about what FEMAP mm -hmm. is and the program. So um, is there, um, as you have mentioned that there's like a lot of different branches and a lot of different um, mm -hmm. departments within it. And do you think why is FEMAP so important to you? Like, are there specific kind of um, methods or like the, their approaches are really beneficial toward youth? So it's, it's targeted towards youth because that is the most prominent um, demographic that experiences mental health uh, for the first time, especially. And it's targeted towards people who are newly experiencing these things or who've, who've never seeked any professional help before. So it's a great place to start and it gets you set up for different courses of action along your recovery journey. And it's just a great place for youth because they're very well versed in what they do and it's very specified to um, youth and young adults. And another great thing about this program is that you can't age out of it. Uh, for example, when I was still in Manitoba, when I was a youth, when I was 17 years old, as soon as I turned 18, I was not allowed to speak to my psychiatrist anymore. And uh, that hasn't been the case for FEMAP. Once you hit the, the age gap, you're still able to seek help because you're already in the program. And that's, that's a really important factor that a lot of other programs do not do. Not do. Definitely. Yeah, thanks for sharing this information. I think it's really useful as many programs really do have like an age specified to it. But for FEMAP, like there's not like no a limit towards how old you are, but it's like a kind of a lifelong supportive program that to help you to um, to become better and then to feel like not not anxious anymore and to have like a lot of support from friends and then um, maybe a place to meet new friends as well. So thank you so much. And then um, just a last question. So do you have any message you'd like to share with those who are watching, maybe who are also battling mental health problems? The biggest piece of advice I have is to not be afraid to ask for help. Um, asking for help is not a sign of weakness and there is a lot of strength in vulnerability. So asking and seeking for help is one of the best things you can do and it makes you stronger. I definitely agree. So we'll encourage people who may find them like needing for help for support to go to FEMAP and then you will always feel like being support there and then mm -hmm. to have like a lot of friends encouraging you and then helping you along the way. So definitely thank you so much for your time with us today and um, have a wonderful evening and a great year ahead. Awesome. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you. And now I would like to pass on to Cecilia. Yeah, and thank you, Catherine and Tandra, for an amazing and informative interview. And so next up, we have a Chinese traditional dance performance by the Chinese Cultural Department in Sivo. And it is a very common dance in the northern part of parts of China in which people use to celebrate uh, festive gatherings and cheerful scenarios. Throughout the concert, we have seen some creative integrations of cultures, but we have prepared some more diverse performances for all of you here. Following the traditional dance performance, we have two more piano pieces from WPS to greet us with their wonderful performances. They're Gabriel's Oboe and Cinema Paradiso by Henry Fu and Jump Up Superstar by Oliver Joe. As well, we have an interview conducted by the Western Piano Society President Farah and VP of HR Oliver on their views about the coping mechanisms on COVID-19. Please enjoy.
I was thinking about how to answer this question, I was actually going on my phone. And then I thought, I really used to use this to get myself out of awkward social interactions in the past. And now it's literally the first thing I reach for because I want to, I want social interactions. So a common theme amongst the things I've done to adjust is trying to do as much of what I did in the past with others in person, but just over video call. And things like Zoom, FaceTime, WeChat, and Discord have actually made checking up on friends and family pretty easy. For example, I've had a great time playing games like Spyfall. If you don't know what that is, definitely give it a try. You're not going to regret it. And even if it's something like making the same food as my friends on video, um, although you can no longer split the work amongst yourselves, I guarantee that you're still going to have just as good of a time. And I personally, I can never go wrong with a good Netflix watch party. As for keeping a positive mindset and healthy lifestyle, I know that gyms may not be open, but there are dozens of exercises you can still do with your body weight alone. And it's also a great opportunity to go outside. And once you've gotten your serotonin up, I find it really helps you stay in good enough of a mood to get out of bed in the morning and then sleep on a regular schedule. But that's all for me. Thanks for having me, Sivo. So obviously, uh, staying connected with friends and family is really difficult during this time, uh, but something that I like to do or at least try to do is I try to call my family at least once a day and even if we're both busy sometimes a quick hello goes a long way. Um, the second thing I like to do um, is planning either movie nights or games nights with my friends and this is especially important if I'm feeling super stressed or anxious because I find that it helps me uh, still feel connected to them even if we can't physically be together. And then the final thing is something really small, but I find it's been helping a lot, to be honest, is, um, well, first of all, uh, just sharing more about what I'm doing on social media. So I really enjoy piano and guitar. And so um, I've kind of been sharing that a lot more on my, on my social media. Um, I find it's a great conversation starter with people that I may not have talked to in a while, uh, within a while. And um, the second part to that is just replying to people's stories. I know it's a really small act, but I've actually rekindled a lot of my uh, friendships and um, just by replying to their stories. If I see something cool um, and I haven't talked to that person in a while, I'm just going to let them know and I'm going to start a conversation. And that's kind of been helping me a lot with um, feeling a little less lonely during these times. Alright, so this wrap up our evening tonight and it has been a wonderful concert. I hope you all have enjoyed watching the fantastic performances brought by Toronto Chinese Orchestra, Western Piano Society, Chinese International Volunteer Organization, Linden Chinese Student Choir, One Dance, Linden Chinese Association, and listening to the precious stories shared by our guests from Linden Health Science Foundation. If you would like to support the program FEMAP to help provide a safe and confidential place for youth who are suffering from emotional concerns, please click the donation link beside. And by any point in time, if you feel the need, please feel free to contact FEMAP anytime to get support. So finally, on behalf of Chinese International Volunteer Organization, CIVO, I would like to express my appreciation to all the audiences. Thank you for taking your time to join us here supporting CIVO and the program VMAP. It is my honor and great pleasure to host this concert with Celia. Now, let me introduce the last performance by, brought by Western Piano Society and instrumental, uh, and instrumental performances to end and conclude today's concert. Wish everyone a pleasant evening. <laughs>